Yeah. Hello all. Welcome back to Uncommon Geeks. My name is Vasanth. I hope you all doing well. So in this specific video, I'm going to do a mock interview of Amit. So Amit is having two years of experience in the front end development. You will be hearing more about him from himself. So this specific video is targeted to everyone, whoever is in the interview preparation and you are also expecting a mock interview. The good way to get a uh, good use of this video is like every time after I ask a question, you can pause the video and you can also try to answer. Then you can see what Amit is answering so that you get an idea whether you're answering right or wrong. Okay. Now, without wasting further time, let's get started. Amit, can you give a quick intro of yourself? Yeah, sure. So, I'm Amit. I am from Fort Wilkins, Bihar. So, I'm currently working as a software engineer two role in Wingify. So, it's been more than two years. Uh, I have more than two years of experience working as a front-end developer. Uh, prior to Wingify, I was in Wittler Labs. And the text stack which I mostly use is ReactJS. Apart from this, JavaScript, HTML, CSS is the common thing. And for styling purpose, I use mostly style component. Good. Okay, apart from this, I have small under small knowledge of Node.js. Wonderful, wonderful, Amit. Amit, can you please present your screen and show your resume to me so that uh, I can see if there is any question that I can ask from your resume. Yeah, yeah. I uh, can you. I think I need access. What okay, sure. Need? Let me give. Let me quickly give it. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I'm sharing my entire screen. I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, cool. I can see your so screen. Yes. Okay, sure. So, yeah. So, you have uh, working in Wingify where you are working on a flagship product editor which generates around 70% of the total revenue. Yeah. React website that you have built here and Tailwind CSS, lazy loading concepts. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about the project? Like, what is the project uh, here? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so our the main product is called editor. Uh, so, that product is used by the client. So that they can uh, generate some A/B testing. Okay. Thing. So I can give you a more easy example. Let's say you have your website. Got it. Okay. Then you have your headings and images. Hmm. So now you want uh, let's say different versions of your website. Let's say you hmm. want heading. Now your heading you want a different heading like heading one. Hmm. And in in other version you want your images to be different images. Let's say image you have image one now image two. Yeah. So so we give you a solution. So. Hmm. So we have our own, you can say, our front end. Um, you go there, uh, you upload, you use your website, and then you can do all the changing. So the whole commands are very easy. Like you will just click at an element, you will get all the options. Like, do you want to change the HTML? Do you want to change the image? Everything. So okay. once you do, once you save everything, and then, and then we will also host everything. Mm. So now what will happen? So whenever the user, let's say you have hundred users, and now you created three variations. So mm. now. Uh, and you, I think you uh, split it everything in 30, 33 percentage. Mm. So all the weightage. So now what will happen? 33 people will see your original uh, website. 33 will see our version where you mm. just made a heading to header one. Mm. And then 30, 30 people will see our version where you change some images. Mm. So this way you now, so now you can uh, also, we also uh, tracking the, some engagements like okay, how much time the user uh, visited on the website, what they clicked. So these are some of the uh, tracking things which we track. So this gives you insight. Okay, which version is performing well? So maybe okay. we can. So after doing this, so you can improve your website. So that's what we do. Got it. So Amit, I'll just quickly summarize. So basically, you have a product where somebody can come yeah. and upload their uh, a website, and they can do yeah. certain modifications. So it has to be hosted on your own hosting service, so that you give a yes. lot of options like rolling out the changes to a particular portion of users and see how it is performing. So if they're happy, they can roll out the changes to everyone like that. Yeah, correct. That's correct. So yeah. here my question is: How you gonna determine like which portion of the user? Like let's say we have a product. So where thirty percent using one header, thirty percent using remaining header. So how are you gonna mm -hmm. determine this thirty percent user? Like which thirty percent you don't know? Like there are let's say hundred users. So how are you gonna yeah. pick the thirty percent users in random? Okay, or? so hmm. yeah, it's random. It's random. It's not uh, specific. You, it's a random. Got it. So now let's say you made the change. Okay, only to the specific mm -hmm. portion of the thirty percent of users. Then yeah. you are not happy with the experience. Like customers are not happy with the change that has been made. Mm -hmm. Now they want to revert the change. So you have a capability yeah. to enable it to only those thirty percent users? No, no, I don't. We don't have some, but yeah, you can just delete this variation so mm. that now the the user can't see such version is mm. existed. I get it. I get it. So basically, you don't have like a why I'm asking this. You see, app rollouts happen, right? Yeah. Android, and iOS. There's a yeah. percentage rollout right. that happens: one percent, two percent, ten percent. So yeah. after ten percent rollout, sometimes company decides to stop the rollout. Okay. So 90% people have not received the latest version, but 10 people have received the latest version. Correct. So if it rolls out, 
and then gives a new release okay with enhanced version it will go back to same 10% of users which were there before it will not go to the other 10% okay that's why i asked yeah. sure sounds good uh, amit now let's get started with some react questions okay can you sure. please open the project uh, so just to save some time guys i have asked uh, amit to create a empty project and keep okay so i'm sharing one small object uh, for you in the chat okay yeah so yeah i'm just copy sure okay so it's yeah. not like uh, yeah can you go back to react app yes can go back to code okay so yeah. it's not like properly in the camel case but uh, my yeah. expectation i'll tell can you go to the function app and uh, good you have also made hello uncommon geeks like me you are marketing yeah. me <laughs> thank you so yeah thank can you paste yeah. the object in the line number 4 yeah i'm just do enter nahi no, nahi no. above a return above the return oh, yeah i got it i got it i got yeah. it i got it and just uh, i mean make the changes for the casing like uh, yeah okay so maybe yeah first time second time you can make it like a small case okay later yeah. give some random value okay yeah yeah sure and yeah this is something i need to use first name like this okay and yeah i yeah. need to use this comma yes okay so uh, give something yeah okay so my expectation is this amit okay people you an audience who are watching i'll try to paste the object in the description section please copy okay. this so you have you have a button now on click of the button the okay. only the second line value has to be changed from test to 2 to test to 3 rest has to remain as it is am i clear okay okay please yeah, so okay okay so uh, let's me come to the question again sure. so that we can be in the same side Sure. So we have an object, okay, mm. and so I assume that I need to show everything like Amit Correct. Kumar, whatever the value is there. Let's say Correct. I will give you a mock implementation mm. like mock view. Mm. Now what will happen? You have a button that will let's say the button will like change second line, mm. okay. Mm. Once we click it, the test two will be going to change to be something different. Let's say we created Correct. a different test value. Three. Test three, okay. Three. Yeah. Rest should rest of the value should be untouched. There should be no change. Okay. Okay, good, so good. you can create like H1 tag and render all of this, like first name, second name, address, first yeah. line one, second line, all of that. Okay, so yeah. on click of a button, just the second line should change. Okay, rest should remain yeah. as it is. You have just less than five minutes to solve this. Okay. Okay. Cool. No problem. Okay, let's do it. Let's use this. Okay, now I think I need one thing. So I need mm. to store the value so that it can be mm. changed. So mm. I so now let's do the main part. So I'm okay. just using const same name object. Mm. So I need to do something. Get object. I'm using like a good state, okay, and then I will use this object here. Mm. Yeah, I think that will be not possible. So let's do this command X and put it here. Let's do this. So now we have our object and the mm. set object. Okay. Mm. Now we need us a function. This is already defined. It's called function. Okay. And then I need handle chains. Handle, handle chain. Okay. And what will we do? Okay. So whenever I click this, uh, I need to change this to. Mm, second line to first channel. Okay, mm -hmm. so I will do like set object. Mm -hmm. So what I need, uh, I will do. I will just copy uh, whatever the objects we have right now. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Then okay, I will get all the objects. Then I need to do addressing part. Okay, so hmm. I will just do address. Then I will do like colon. Then I will again do the same colon of hmm. object whatever the address we have. Object dot address. Good. Okay. Hmm. So hmm. now then I need just need to confirm the second line, hmm. which will be uh, my test tree. Hmm. Good. So I think. Hmm. Let's save it. Okay. Let me go with this one. Okay. It's like okay. I missed. Okay. Sorry. That was my mistake. Uh, I just need to have everything in the op in JavaScript. Hmm. Why it is not working? So yeah, I think this will work now. Yeah. I mean, come on. This one. If I click on change, so this is history. Good. Any other alternative solution to this, Amit? Rather doing the spread operator. Hmm. Alternative operation. Okay. Let me think. What we can do it apart from spread operator? Yeah. yeah. We always need. We if we do some changing. We also need to keep uh, track of whatever the other devices share. I think there was a way. I just get it. Done. I think there one method called use user. We can use that. Okay. But still, there is one way because if you have lots of complex uh, scenario and you want a sp special part of the object to just say, so that will be very easy to use use user. Okay. Sure. Sure. Can you go back to the code? Yeah. Okay. Code. So we, I think I recently wrote this on LinkedIn also. So this is a deeply nested, not a deeply to nested object. I don't see the nested yeah. object of the uh, object, yeah. correct? So how it is stored in the memory, Amit? Okay, so uh, whenever this, okay, oh yeah, I think I got it. So whenever we have an object, so we know object are reference wise. So correct. it will store, it will store the reference. Now when we have extra object, let's say hmm. now in this object, it is not going to sit there. Exactly. So there is a proof that even I can prove the whole thing. Ah, uh, so here this object is you can think about this is one more extra object. Like I Correct. can give you like let test it, and yes. there we have this definition of this whole object. Correct. There and now and it's just points to this test reference. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you do the copy, that's why you still we have the reference of the same at the same way. If you don't do the deep clone, deep cloning. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Sure, Amit. So, see one of this another. I'll ask another question. This is one of the common question that I asked in the interview related to React. Okay, let's say you are on a page. Okay, and the in the page there are three API calls are made, parallel API calls. Okay, which are not dependent okay. on one another. This was asked to me in Reliance Geo when I had attended the interview. Okay, okay. Uh, so now what is happening is you I have logged into the website. Let us say. Okay, and you have not logged out. No need to write. I'll tell. Okay, so you are not logged out. Okay. And next time you open the application, but your authorization token is already expired. Even before the first API call is made, your authorization token is already expired. Okay. Okay. So now what you have to do is, uh, let's say as I mentioned, you have to make a three API calls. Correct. Okay. So these three API calls, whatever you are making now, all the key calls will fail because authorization token has been expired. Okay. As they are happening in parallel. So propose a yeah. solution where only one API call is made, and you get to know that token is expired. Okay. Further calls are made only after the to new token has arrived. What is your solution to this problem? Stop. Obviously, there is a lot of research that has gone into making this video. So please like the video and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon if you're not already done so. And add a comment whatever you felt so far. The reason for that I always say I have only motto of I help want to help to candidate to clear their interview. So if more likes, more comments, video becomes visible for a lot. Whenever it is visible for a lot, uh, there is a high chance I get more subscribers and the followers. Definitely the there is a high chance I would be able to reach my cause very soon. Okay, so please like and comment about the video before watching the further. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think um, let's say we have a fetch call. I'm I'm just writing a small boilerplate mm. uh, for the idea. So we have a fetch call. So I'm using a fetch call. Let's say this is something URL one. Mm. URL one. I will get some value URL one. Then I will have a then call because there I need to check the everything is working or not. Correct. Okay. Cool. So now uh, here, I think let's say this UR one is giving some status. Let's say I have something mm. called status. I will let's say uh, this is my response, mm. and in the response, I will have something called response dot status. Mm. Okay. Uh, now the status is there. Mm. So uh, okay, response. I will just check this status. Mm. Mm. Okay. Once this is done, then I will do the other two API calls here. Mm. 
If it is success, then only okay. The call will eventually happen. Either mm. if you, if you, uh, so the only thing you can do. I'm just thinking. Okay. Promise dot all settled piece of method. Mm. But uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if I'm so, I'm just uh, asking for small hint. Okay. Do I need to use some of the promises method? Like there are already some no, promises uh, methods. It's not more on the how what concept you use is more like on your uh-huh. system design thinking. So if you are building the yeah. system, what you ha- what you will do? That is what the intention of the okay. question. It's nothing to do with the, some concepts like promise, promise dot all, nothing like that. Okay, so so. Mm. Mm. I'm thinking of if I don't have if I have such thing. Okay, uh, I'm think I'm I'm just thinking that I will use this or promise or all settled thing uh, because in this time I will have all the responses like exactly. Mm. response mm. one response to errors everything mm. and now i know if response one status is something like mm. say it is 200 then only i will go and track everything mm-hmm. from two or three okay sure sure if audience there if you know the answer one. mention in the comment section okay amit definitely there is a better answer you can read after the interview yeah. if audience know sure, sure. please mention in the comment section okay yeah amit now can you write a uh, the the polyfill for ra dot map method you know no, how I to write polyfill right you can just create here it's only one file like say maybe some something dot js and you can try writing a polyfill for array dot map okay sure nothing yeah. array dot array map yeah okay, so... first tell me what array dot map does you tell me okay so array dot so when the array it's a array dot map okay the map is a method which is introduced introduced to the array Hmm. Okay, so it will iterate to each uh, each and every element of the hmm. array, hmm. and let's say we are doing we want to do some modification hmm. to such our each element. Hmm. So this will do the modification, and it will return a new array. Okay. With modified okay. result. So what is the difference between map and then for each? Common question. Okay, so yeah, so map and for each. So as we I can say both are an array methods. Both are used to iterate. Okay, the only difference is that. in map if i use map i will get a i will get a return array mm. okay and if i use for each i don't get such array so it's like mm. if you wanted to modify your array then you can do your for each method mm. but if you want some modification but you don't want to affect your array mm. then you can use map sure please go you have 5 minutes okay, okay. it's it's straight sure, forward sure, please write write yeah. a polyfill yeah okay one okay polyfill so let me do Just writing function my mm. map. Mm. Okay, so I will take and call that function. Mm. That's one thing. And yeah, I think that's only thing. We will take call that function. So whenever I call this function, okay, because whenever I use a dot operator, then this points to the object which is referring. So and array is also an object. So I'm just thinking. So I'm just showing that let self will be our this. Why I just get me right? equal to this, so I got the this operation. Mm. Now I need to say to which element. So let me think like let output this will be my output array because mm. output will be empty. Okay, now I will use like for loop for let I equal to zero I less than other thing. Then I press plus then I will just use. Okay. So mm-hmm. what will happen? So whatever the output, this this callback will do something now, uh, and it will return something. So I will just like output of output of i is equal to cell, okay, not cell. Its callback is a function, and it will take the so what will error dot so it will take first the first element like whatever the element you are working on mm. cell from i. Then obviously I think it will take second element is the i, mm. uh, the current index, and yeah the whole array. Hmm. That's one thing. 
and now we have all the the this callback will function will get called and whatever the response it will get will show in the uh, output then i will just include return the output yes okay now this is my function now when but now since this method is not available to array mm. so i need to give um, i need to tell array that okay we have such function so array. for that i need to use prototype so i will use the array dot this is the main method array dot prototype uh, prototype then i will write to write my my map Yeah. Map is equal to uh, my map which I already used. Hmm. Okay. So why am I? So if I need to test this, I can do it. Hmm. Please test. Yeah. So let's see. We have one, two, three. One comma two comma three. Then I will use my map. Okay. And I will just try it. Okay. Uh, let's call this. The function will do like. Okay. So this is a function. We'll. It will take uh, the function will take like current element, and just it will return uh, return current into current into two. Let's say I'm just multiplying this over here to get me something, and let's see. Hmm. I'm just putting const output. Then I'm just uh, console dot log out. Okay. Okay. Let me run this. So I can use like. Uh, Node array map. Okay, I don't think this. I need to go yeah. to this source directory. Yeah. Okay, CD, and then I will use in the source. Search. Okay, currently in the source now. I will just use node, hmm. and I will use array. Not there, huh? In this hierarchy. Map. Yeah. Let's see. Two for six. Mm, okay. Good, good. So yeah, I'll, good, good. Amit, whatever you have written is good. Okay. So now let's say you have written in this particular file, correct? Mm -hmm. And you have written some function to the array, and you want to use it all across your project. Okay. Yeah. You're getting what I'm saying. So in that case, what is the the thing that you will do? Let's like this my map, right? It should be accessible to entire React project that you have written. Okay. What is the process then? Like any anywhere you go and write array dot, how it push. Pop and all will come right. Like that, this my map also should appear. If you have you are structuring the project, where you will keep this, keep that. Okay, so I think I need to use poly. I will. So let's say this is some map, mm. some this thing. So mm. I need to put this inside. I think index or js. Mm. So that will be the sub root. And mm. here, if I use that value, because mm. whatever this thing, and then I have the access to everywhere if I mm. use there. Okay. I'm thinking. Sure, sure. Please read. Audience also comment if you know any better solution. Okay. So Amit, uh, you can stop sharing. Let's get into some conceptual topics now. Okay. Yeah. So please tell me this again. Very common question. What is uh, uh, maybe some other tab you can open? Uh, hmm. Just for the purpose. One second. Let me. You can stop sharing basically. Okay. So tell me what is reconciliation in React, uh, Amit? Reconciliation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Reconciliation. Okay. Reconciliation in React. Okay. Reconciliation in React. Okay. So as we know in React, what will happen? So React uses virtual DOM concept, mm. and so it just do like it will. The virtual DOM is already in sync with the real DOM. Mm. Okay. And so that's the real thing is called reconciliation. So to sync your virtual DOM with the real DOM, that's reconciliation. Okay. Now this involves two things. Like one thing is your we need your virtual DOM, and there is other thing called uh, diffing algorithm. Hmm. Okay, so what is diffing algorithm now? So diffing algorithm is basically um you can say a method or method which will do nothing. Like whenever we make some changes, so a new virtual DOM gets created. So now what it will do? It will compare with the uh, old virtual DOM. Uh, then it will figure out okay what are the minimum states. I need to use so that I can convert from uh, my old virtual DOM to the new virtual DOM. Mm. That's the different algorithm, and yeah, the whole process is called reconciliation. So, how many virtual DOMs are there in the overall process now? Uh, currently, there are two, right? Two. Okay. So, in this process, uh, till the diffing is done. Once the diffing is done, now we again have one. Okay. So now, once the diffing is done, old virtual DOM is decommissioned, or the new virtual DOM is decommissioned? Okay. So that's I think the old one is going to be coming because Correct. our new one has the latest data. Correct. 
Correct. Have we ever looked into diffing algorithm, like how the algorithm actually works under the hood? I'm not going through because I tried to go through the the, mm. uh, the docu docs was not that explained and like okay right. exactly how the things are. But yeah, I got a small idea. Like so, normally what will happen? As we know, the DOM is basically a tree. So if I need to compare two tree, I need to go through each and uh, nodes and compare the sub nodes. So I think this whole process takes around order of n cube hmm. time com- complexity. Hmm. And the dipping, what they does, so I think they made some uh, tweak around the whole algorithm, and they reduce this complexity somehow n- a nearby order of n. Got it. Good. Yeah. Good. Damage. So that's good. Okay. okay. Let's talk about something uh, about a higher order components. Can you please tell me what are higher order components in React? Okay, so higher order component are basically a component which will take on another component, and it will give you, or uh, again one more component. So now let's say we have some component and we want some modification to hmm. such component. So we will create a higher order component. Now this higher order component will take uh, different uh, component and that it, this will do the some modification and it will turn a new component. Okay. Give me one practical example. I mean, don't give me bookish example. Practical example where you yeah. used a higher order component. Okay. Okay. So the practical example, I think we, if I use the thing which I mostly use, I think React dot memo. The memo no, no. ISN. That's of, not a uh, no no. That is something built in. Something you built okay. for your requirement. You think you had a requirement for higher order component and you built it. Okay. I built with some components. Uh, not think. necessarily you. You can tell if you not you. Your team has built, so you are aware of that requirement. Let me think. I think what I have, which we have used. Okay, I think we have the practical implementation is like the error error boundary check. That is mm-hmm. one thing you can even think of. Like here, mm-hmm. we all need to take a extra. I think component and then return. That is something. I do. Okay. So sure. I, I never use this. And the only thing I use is check, uh, the inbuilt functions. Got it. Got Probably it. I, I will I will create a new one or maybe I will post it in like this. Exactly. The reason for that is see every optimal technique na unless you uh, mastered it when to use it right, so you wouldn't yeah. use it like in your case right. There could be a scenarios where you yeah. might have used higher order component but you might have not used correct. So just like yeah. if you check you'll be able to get to know when to use it properly. Okay. Please tell me when you will use use callback hook. Okay, use callback. Okay. Mm. So, use callback is used to make. Uh, it, it's again a memoize technique. Mm. Okay, so use callback will memoize the functions. Mm. We know memoize the response by function. Let's say what will happen. So sometimes we also let you know, we also pass a function for our function from parent component to child component. Okay, and we know when. Uh, so whenever we rendering happens, the function again got re-rendered and it will again create a new uh, version. I mean, let's say it again gets a new memory. Mm-hmm. So, but still the fun- whole function is still same. But mm-hmm. now what will happen? Due to this, the child component which is taking this function as an uh, as an prop is uh, now again going to re-render. Mm-hmm. So Got we it. can we can just minimize this thing by just wrapping inside a user. Got content. it. Got it. So I get it. So basically, there is a function in the parent component, and uh, something is calling that function. Some some component some. Yeah. Uh, return statement sum is calling that particular function so every yeah. time an object some t- change has happened in the parent component the function is retriggered in that case the yeah. child is also rendered unnecessarily even though there is no yeah. change in the function correct yeah. so then we can use use callback for almost all the functions right as it will improve the yeah. efficiency correct yeah yeah that's correct but then, basically let's say yeah i can give you the example let's say mm-hmm. yeah something let's mm-hmm. say if the function is doing nothing just a normal function like mm-hmm. we don't have lots of calculation lot of uh, things mm-hmm. Just a plain normal function, Got which it. is not dependent on any of the states. Mm. So I don't think this will impact lots of performance. You can just mm. use it directly. Don't Got need much. But mm. now let's say we have some function which is using dependent on some inputs, mm. uh, some states. So mm. this way, this is very good to up- optim. Uh, I mean, you can say just uh, memoize this thing. I got it. So, see, but technically, Amit, if you tr- start using use callback for all the function, overall efficiency would increase. But people are not you doing that, correct? Like you said, very specific yeah. functions only they are using. Any other reason yeah. other than you said you think is um, blocking from using use callback? Any other reasons blocking from use callback? Because I know, like you said, it may not have a lot of performance impact. But let's say um, one millisecond is also saving. Everywhere I can use use callback, correct? So yeah. some amount of time I am saving. 
I think maybe well, probably I think I don't exactly know no, why no. we are not using this. No, what you say yeah, is also agree. right, but there there are little bit of in depth uh, uh, explanations as well. Okay, I'm mostly done from my end, Amit. Okay. Uh, before I give my feedback, if you have any general questions about the interview, you can ask. Yeah. Okay. The general component. Uh, okay, so I think one question you asked me. Uh, I really want your opinion about this mm. fetch call thing. Hmm. So there are multiple ways to solve the problem. So this is uh, I can say there is a right or wrong way to solve this. This is, depends on the approach. So one easiest approach is keep a common uh, block where API calls would go. You write a utility function where all the API calls basically go through that. Okay. So what you're going to do is uh, let's say three API calls going through one gateway. Correct. So some call will definitely go to that particular utility function first. Correct. As soon as that call goes, you make an API call. Okay. And uh, if, if the API call is failed, uh, due to any reason in that time, what you will do, you'll set some flag variable as false. Okay. And whenever the further calls come to that, so in, there's a chance where when this happening also another call might have happened. If not, all the further calls are pushed into an array. If the, that particular flag value set to like is authorization failed to true, then all the calls are pushed into an array. Okay. Then one call you will make separately. Okay. To get the authorization token. So this, you keep it in a separate function, which will like get the token. Then check whether any value there in the array, like any calls, pending calls need to be made. Then it will make the pending calls. Okay. So this is one way, one approach is to solve this, but this again involves, again, like I mentioned, a lot of things you need to take care. Okay. Yeah. If now, if your application, another is not a solution. If your application is not so critical, uh, in that case, you can give yeah. a retry mechanism everywhere. Uh, like yeah. they, three calls you are not saving. Basically they make a call. And uh, once the token is expired, right? So maybe they will retry the retrigger the call by then assumption that token is already has come because some, whenever that status code comes, you might have already triggered a call for the, this one, the multiple other approach also, which I want audience also to guess if you get to know any better approach also mentioned, I'll be more than happy to add a comment to that. Okay. Any other questions, Amit? Okay. I think, yeah, this use callback last time. Uh, so yeah. I give some, information, but maybe just if you highlight. Correct. So one thing, what you said was absolutely right. See, uh, everywhere we cannot use because everywhere we might not be doing a very complex operation. Very important point to notice every optimization technique, use callback, use memo, higher order components, pure components. They all have a performance effect by themselves. Like they add certain, because they are optimization technique, right? They, they have written a lot of code behind the hood to make them optimal. So it is not that you use them. It's like silver bullet for solving all the problem. They have their own problem. Okay. So in react official documentation, they mentioned, try to build your component in such a way of not using use callback, use memo kind of a things. Okay. If you, there's no way you have come to a situation where you cannot uh, do only then use the optimization technique because they introduce some amount of delay. So it is only good. If you use something like you mentioned the complex operation, it is good. Okay. Otherwise it is not that worth using. Okay. So I'm with, I'll share my uh, brief feedback about whatever the interview that I took. It's almost, I think 35 minutes so far. So one thing you have been fundamentally strong uh, with whatever the react concepts and JavaScript concepts that I've asked you so far, uh, building the polyfill and other thing, uh, uh, which is very good. So let's say if you're attempting for any service based company or a preliminary kind of a product based company, you'll be definitely able to clear the interview. Okay. Only one thing that I want to highlight is like, uh, product based companies, especially premium product based companies, they get into too in, in depth. So I have a time limitation. I cannot get into very much in depth in of all the concepts, mm -hmm. but whenever they get into a lot of uh, concepts, very much in depth, I see a little bit of a hollowness. Like you need to master a little bit about the fundamentals at a very high level. You have a very good understanding. Okay. For a two year experience, you have been phenomenal. There is no doubt about it. But if you are targeting for a very premium companies, Google, Microsoft, this kind of a companies, probably my advice is go and read something in depth. Look, now, you know, I recently wrote a LinkedIn post about few yeah. of the website that I generally go and read. So yeah. one, this to you and to all audience, please constantly have a practice of reading developer.mozilla.org is one of my favorite. Now this even beta dot uh, react JS documentation, that website also. So in beta dot react, these advantages, they have not just written about react. They have also written a lot of JavaScript concepts. Like I mentioned the nested object. I actually read it from the uh, react JS documentation itself. So spend more time, read the concepts. And obviously my channel also a lot of good content. You and the audience can also watch to le learn the content. These are my uh, simple advice to proceed further. Okay. Okay, then. 
nice talking to you amit so i guess audience you also enjoyed the video if you have any comment uh, about the question that i asked please mention that in the comment section me and amit both will be more than happy to answer answer whatever the question that you have thank you so much for watching catch you next video thank you thank you